Westerners, we have stolen your precious spirit stick. And if you wish to find it, you must look for clues around the Northwest area, or risk losing your school spirit forever. Privates Mickey and Bravo, you must be wondering why you've been called in. We received a transmission from an unknown source near 123rd Street in Lamar, claiming to have taken the spirit stick. We need you to get it back. We've placed senior agents around the area. We need you to contact them. Remember, the fate of our school spirit depends on you. May Sharp be with you. I see a talented agent taking pictures all the times at games. Maybe he captured the stick being stolen. There has been some talk about who is taking all these awesome pictures. Who really is who shot it? I do take a uh, newspaper, so that's kind of where I put my skills to use. Uh, what inspired me was um, I've always really been interested in photography, um, but uh, last year I took a photography class, and that's why I like really got my first hands on a camera, you know. So. Uh, yeah, but I've, I've always been interested, and I just took the class to actually, you know, do it. What I film is sports and events, mainly sports, because it's just like the action is cool, and I like just capturing and showing people from other perspectives that they can't usually see. There are many things that can make a person unique in a variety of ways. Jones' creativity is what makes him stand out. The purpose behind the reason of his uniqueness is because Corey is self-taught. Uh, one day, Corey picked up a camera when he was really, really young, and I won the camera at work on a, on a, a, a pool or something, and he brought the camera home and wanted to take pictures of everything. And I thought that it was really cute and interesting, but of course his interest kind of just fell off as he picked up interest in other things. But all of a sudden, he got into photography and started to express how interested he was, and wanted us to buy him camera equipment so now he has his own equipment and he wants he want one day he wanted to do a montage of me and my eyelashes and he added music to it and I saw how he edited the the video and I was so in awe I knew then that it, it was brewing and I was just there to support it. Having a passion is one thing finding a place to explore and share is another. Corey is a very talented photographer and I had heard mostly first semester um, about uh, this really talented photographer who had uh, an Instagram. Uh, he was showing up shooting a lot of sports and things going on around school um, that I needed to see if I could get him on newspaper. He photographs events, things going on around school, and whatever we need photograph. Corey's very good at, at what he does. I think particularly sports, he's, he's very good at. He positions himself well, he's got good timing, uh, he knows what he's doing and, and gets really good images. Although Jones does a lot of his work on his own, that does not stop his friends and family from being there for him every step of the way. My mom is more on the, like, seeing the product side. She sees, like, a lot of my work and, um, like, how my pictures and videos come out. Unfortunately, I want, I'm not able to make it to every one of his events. Um, but I follow him on Instagram. I push others to follow him on Instagram. I encourage him to um, increase his genre. Um, I uh, support him whenever someone gives him a spotlight or contacts him on Instagram for outside work. Not only is Jones putting his skills to use at high school, but is planning to make it a part of his future career. Um, it's always been my dream to just shoot big events and um, big games and stuff like that. So. Uh, one of my goals is to shoot college basketball, so I'm going to try to do that within the next year. I encouraged Corey to go to a university so that he can be able to pick up more knowledge behind photography. As with, with any student, I, I, I want the student to pick something that they love to do and enjoy doing and can make a living doing it. Um, certainly Corey can do that with photography if that's what he wants to do. Um, so. However he wants to do it, as long as he's taking pictures, I think the world will be a happier place. Looks like our school could have a future famous photographer in our midst. Hopefully we see Pushad at courtside at a college game next year. This is Round Jar with Husky Headlines. I said to go check our uh, track, and I talked to one agent that's seen over here a lot. Northwest has an abundance of athletic opportunities, and multiple students excel at a variety of different ones. 
Lovey Pulliam is an example of someone who shines in multiple sports he competes in. I play football and track. Track, we've always ran. Um, we've always like kind of let him run out a lot of energy. And so we'll go to the track so he can just kind of run himself until he falls asleep pretty much. So we will we'll always go. Football, he was a baseball guy. He played a lot of baseball since kindergarten. Kind of came to me and said he wanted to play football. I was just kind of like, if you want to do it, do whatever you want to do. We, we practice all summer long, wide receiver drills. We thought he was going to go in for wide receiver. Then he signed up for the camp. Go for the camp, man. I want you to go to the camp. Came back, said, hey, I'm a running back. Okay, cool. Let's learn something new. Let's YouTube, whatever we got to do to find out exactly what running back does. So that's what we did. So that's kind of really how you got into football. Let me run the 300 hurdles. Uh, he usually run the 110 hurdles. Uh, runs a 400 open. He runs a 4x4. Four 4x1. Four, four sometimes 200. So we kind of put Levy in a little everything. He's versatile. Although Pulliam is having a good track season this year, he had a minor setback when he came head on with an injury while prepping for this year's football season. Challenges, he had a torn hamstring during track season last year. You can tell it kind of really weighed heavy on him. Getting ready for the season, knowing that, hey, I could potentially be starting running back going into the season. That really kind of set him back, I think, mentally a little bit. But you also seen him not complain. He grinded, he worked out, he listened. He listened to his doctors, coaches, and also parents. He just stayed with it. I think that's what really brought him back to this season and allowed him to get back on the field. Although Pulliam had a minor setback, he also had some of his best performances during this track season. He's been winning. I mean, kind of first of the year, he's kind of down. Now he's been, a couple of meets have been winning 300. The guys are looking at what he's doing and, you know, they're trying to get where he's at right now. You want the medals in your hand right now instead of having ribbons. So he's getting the medals right now. He's a leader. I mean, a lot of these guys follow love. He comes to practice every day. Don't cry, don't complain. Does what he needs to do, get in, get out and it is paying off for him right now. After being at Northwest for four years, Pulliam has gained insight into what running track means to him. It's, it's very lively, like we pick each other up, like we, none of us like bring each other down, we always like set the bar high for each other. It's just the people I'm with, because all my four years, the guys I surround myself with are like very positive with me, so I'm like, I love it a lot. Hard to find leaders, I mean, right now, nobody else is falling behind them right now. I gotta find somebody that can you know, fill his shoes right now. Like now he's leading the practice that we look right now and everybody else is just kind of just following him. So I gotta figure out who can fill his shoes next year. It's gonna be the biggest thing next year. Like hard workouts like Mondays, that, that's the hard one. Like do I wanna do this one more rep or do I like, wanna like go easy? But you always gotta go hard. Hey, like to like underclassmen, do any sport you wanna do. If you like do, go do like one practice, it's okay. Like at least you tried it and see if you liked it. Enjoy every single moment of high school. Enjoy the people that you got a chance to play with. A lot of brotherhood that you, you got. You should really appreciate the guys that you grew up with. Pulliam plans to continue to run track at Haskell Indian Nations University. This is Nick Bogle and Ryland Jar for Husky Headlines. Studio to seniors, we received new intel that agents in the gym may know where the spirit stick is. Affirmative, on our way. I heard these two agents are sisters and work well together. Let's see what they know. Seniors Elise and Josie Grosdeer have been involved in many activities together at Blue Valley Northwest, but their close relationship started long before high school. Um, they were always together, always kind of looking out for each other, always getting things for each other, always concerned where the other one was, that kind of stuff. If they were doing something, they wanted to be together. They've just always been just a pair. I feel like we've been close forever. Like looking back for baby picture, pictures for senior year, some that were just holding each other. We've really been lucky to have such a special relationship and been so close to each other. Growing up together, we just have always been each other's like best friends. And I feel like it's nice because we do like everything together, which I think some people could get tired of, but since we've just always been with each other, it's been nice to be able to do everything together. Despite competing, the gross to twins are always helping each other and their younger sister, Ava, improve. We do push-ups every day, and then if somebody does them, we're like, oh, why didn't you tell me I needed to do them now? Even working out, we always want to beat each other out. If Josie does something, I always want to just get one more rep or just one more, like, five more pounds on the bar. And it really has helped us push to reach our potential in ways that we probably couldn't do it on our own. Growing up with Elise, I think we influence each other in a lot of ways and just because she's always there. But I think she's pushed me to be more dedicated in everything I do. They definitely have a special twin bond and I think they're very similar and they're super competitive. They're great leaders. They set great examples. They're just hardworking kids that want to be the best versions of themselves while I'll also pushing each other to be better as well. They just been such a big inspiration for me. Like everything they do is like inspiring me to be better each and every day. And then like they're great leaders by example. The twins work as a team inside and outside of school. Josie and I, we try to help each other out by just being positive 
um, because track is really, like I said before, it's an individual sport. And so you can really get in your head on that and it, that can really like mess you up. During meets, if we're like one of us is having a bad day, we really just try to help each other out by just giving a few words of advice, but really just giving positive feedback and telling them that you've got the next one, like you've done this before. Um, and for basketball, Josie and I try to help each other out by just being there for each other because there's a lot of ups and downs during basketball season, both mentally and physically. Um, so it's nice to just be able to vent to each other, but also to be there to pick each other up when we're having a bad day. We joke at our house that they're like an old married couple because like, in the morning, so Elise will go downstairs and she'll get out their vitamins and pack their lunch and Josie does other things for them, like putting in their laundry or whatever, and they just always work so well together and she's kind of funny and cute to watch. There's been very few times where they've done something on their own. There was a time where one uh, didn't do, want to do piano and the other one didn't. That was probably the first time they've ever done something separate. That was just for a short time. It's been fun to have somebody to like go through um, classes with and like always have a partner, but it's just been nice to have always have somebody like there with me in school and just always have a person to talk to. Yeah. Josie and Elise will continue their academic and athletic career at Colorado Christian University on the basketball team. This is Ellie Botipka for ASCII Headlines. Josie and Elise said that their friend was a writer and to come check this bookstore for a clue. Well, look, here's her book. She left us a clue. Senior Lillian Flood has been involved in the arts since kindergarten. She is a member of Muse and NEHS as well as Rep Theater and has authored a book in her spare time. According to Flood, it all started with her and her friend writing stories. My best friend and I at the time, we would like write books with her mom and her mom would like type it up and then she would print it out and we would draw the pictures. And so I was like, okay, I love writing. And then the same best friend was in theater at the time. So I was like, what is that? And like, get me in that. Lillian's father, Scott, remembers how her interest developed. Theater became uh, a real passion for her and then it turned into writing and uh, writing uh, books and stories and that turned into writing a, a novel of hers. The novel, entitled The Things We Don't Understand, is available on most book buying websites. AP Lit teacher Valerie Golden was one of the book's first readers. It's a neat collection of short stories that are all tied together, and I love the way she tied them together. I won't give any spoilers. And it was really fun. She came to an NEHS book club meeting and talked about writing the book and how she thought about the characters and created her stories. And it was really fun to hear her talking as an art author about her craft. It's kind of like a coming of age, like understanding who we are as people type of book of like, exploring the uh, lives of five young adults and how their lives change and like the impact of love on who we are and who we're becoming. Flood's love for the arts has had profound meaning to her and will likely continue to be involved in her future. I love the feeling of being creative. I love making something I appreciate or respect or whatever. I love like being on the stage or writing and like giving it to someone or showing it to someone and being like, this is what I've made, this is what I've spent my time on and this is what I love. I don't see her not being in some type of theater as she goes into college. Writing for certain. She'll definitely either be an editor or publisher or some, maybe some you know, novel writer. I'm going to go to college next year and major in English and then become a publisher hopefully or an editor um, and write on the side. <laughs> and theater, I've always seen myself doing like community theater or like, um, like maybe a show or two in college. Flood's talent has been recognized by family and friends as she pursues her dreams in writing. We're, we're really proud of Lil. Uh, she's done a great job, succeeded in school, and is just truly following her passion. She's just an incredible young lady. I think she has a bright future in writing and publishing. I'm excited to see where she goes and what she writes next. Lillian will attend Emerson College, majoring in writing, literature, and publishing with a minor in psychology. This is Gordon Alcock for Husky Headlines. Books that are might be the key to our search, so let's check out Sector 500. You know, I know an art agent who does a lot of art like this. Maybe she'll have something. When individuals contemplate art, they frequently envision renowned sketches and canvases. Nevertheless, Gabby Jordanova's dedication to 3D art has resulted in her artistic inclusion in two museums prior to her reaching the age of 18. There was this mug that I created and we were doing a project and I made it with my two favorite colors, red and black. I just kind of went ham and experimented with a couple different things. And then they announced my name and they're like, Gabriela Jordanova, first place for my piece. And so I ended up walking across the stage and winning first place in the 3D category. I would have been in two museums by the time I was 18 and I know not a lot of people can say that. It was really an honor to be chosen. Prior to achieving success in competitions, her teachers were aware of her artistic passion. What really sticks out to me is um, just her 
attention to detail and then her execution like she just won't give up until she has it right not only in my class but the pieces that she's done in jewelry and just you can just see the time paying attention to like craftsmanship and making sure things were the way they should be throughout the years jordanova has faced numerous challenges in her artistic journey however it is her chess set that has provided her with a sense of accomplishment that many artists strive for with 3d art you really have to overcome your obstacles a little bit more because it's not like a painting where you can just kind of cover it up like you have to just work with the mistakes that you make and make your art better because of them shooting stars nomination i was like okay how can i make this something interesting how can i make this something unique and i ended up constructing a chess set where each piece was a different bug. I didn't realize what I was getting into really until I was already in it. Jordanova's teachers have noticed that her portfolios are increasingly reflecting her authentic self. As graduation approaches, they have valuable advice to offer regarding her future endeavors. Just remember to stay like true to yourself, that you are your own unique individual and never sacrifice that. Continuing to be creative. I don't want her to lose that part of herself. I want her to continue to take art and she's, she's meant to be an artist. Best wishes to you, Jordanova, as you begin your college journey. The Northwest Art Community is rooting for you to keep exploring your passion for art and staying true to yourself. This is Ella Dirks for Husky Headlines. The stick wasn't anywhere in there. Maybe it's somewhere else in the school. So let's check out Sector 400. What if the book was talking about the art of baking? It really wasn't that specific. One of our agents uses her baking skills for her own business. Many students at Northwest have hobbies that they enjoy. One student saw a business opportunity with something she started pursuing during the COVID-19 pandemic. My dad kind of saw that I was like really bored and he knew that I was really getting into baking because it was the only thing that I could really do in the house um, that kept me doing something other than being on my phone or watching the TV or something like that. Anand bakes custom desserts such as cakes, cookies, and brownies for any occasion. She has had multiple influences from within her family that fueled her passion for cooking and baking. I got into baking when I was in fifth grade. My aunt in Malaysia, she's a baker, and I started learning from her. The first time I really like had that spark with baking is she taught me how to pipe little flowers with frosting on cupcakes. Cooking brings me joy and peace. It brings the family together. And she has seen that when she was two to three years old, she would always participate or help in the kitchen in any way she can. And we all come from a family of cooks and she knows what that does in a kitchen. It gathers people together. Anand has close friends that have been supporting her through her journey. I'm just like super proud of her because she started like with, I guess, pretty much nothing, like the ingredients in her kitchen. And then now she's like, she's doing amazing. I just kind of watched her business grow and see how successful she actually got with her business. Outside of making a profit, Anand's business has allowed her to learn important life skills and connect with others. The lessons I've learned through my business would definitely be one of them being patience because I'm not a really patient person especially with baking and making sure that I want my product to be the best that it can be. It takes a lot of time to do all those things. She gets to interact with customers and it just gives her more people skills. And that's very important when you go out to whatever the career may be that you choose. I think that food kind of like connects everyone in a way. It's something that we all like and have in common. It's what we eat every day. Because I've been able to make those connections with people and see how food can make other people happy. See the drive in her to want to be successful, and for those reasons, I'm, I'm proud of her. Though Anand does not plan on pursuing her business as a career, she will definitely not stop bringing people joy through her baking. If you want to try some of her tasty treats, you can make an order by DMing her at CakesByDiani on Instagram. This is Anaya Zaman for Husky Headlines. Since she said baking was so important to her, I think this stick is hidden somewhere that's important to one of our other agents. I know one of them comes here to practice their religion and also some other cultural activities. Every Northwest senior has one thing in common. They're students, but some also happen to be teachers. Take senior Anj Singh Gunani, for example, who teaches Gatka every Sunday at Gurdwar Nanak Darbar Sahib, a Sikh temple. The Gatka is a 
given duty to Sikhs. So you are you are supposed to be learning that at some point in your lifetime. I learned it early, and I can teach others, so I will be teaching others. It is a responsibility and then a, a hobby at the same time. So I think the biggest thing I've learned is discipline, because in doing all of that, you are set to a very strict routine. You have to go through the certain steps. You have to go master the first thing, go to the next thing. There's a whole, like, passage. Everybody takes their own little way to do it. Anch isn't just helpful to his students, but to his fellow teachers. I know when we started organizing Gatka camps, it was hard to like plan what we're gonna do with different students because we had like students starting from six year olds, eight year olds to like 15 and 16 years old. So it was hard to plan what kids are gonna do what. And I think when Anch came in, he was the one you know, telling us to calm down. Like he planned like this group of kids are gonna do these type of skills or this group are safe to use these type of tools. So I think I learned from Anch on how to divide the work and like divide your way of teaching to different people. Anch's family couldn't be more proud of his commitment to teaching Gatka to the next generation. I learned so many things from him. I feel so proud he's uh, keeping our heritage alive. He's religiously following our uh, culture and moreover, I can say on top of everything, he's a beautiful human being who takes care of others. As Anch heads off to college, he plans to carry his teachings and culture with him. This is Eli Dunley for Husky Headlines. Sorry seniors, you're on your own. It's game day. What's up, agents? Game Day Gordo here with your senior edition of HSN. We are at T minus four days until graduation, and there's no time to waste, so let's get right into it. Leading off your report is girls' soccer. They've put together a press time record of 9 4 and 1, placing them 6th and 6A East heading into playoffs. Over to the Diamond now for softball. At press time, they managed a 5 and 15 record with six games left to play. Third is track and field. On May 1st, Varsity took first at a meet at Piper. The state meet will be May 24th and 25th in Wichita. Next we head to baseball. The Huskies are 8-12 at press time, but recently blew out Wichita West and earned an impressive 5-4 victory over North, the final little brother moment for our seniors. Up now is boys tennis. The team placed third in EKL and went to regionals the weekend of May 4th. These and state results were not available at press time. Boys golf has had a solid season and is looking to improve on last year's third place state performance. They participated in regionals yesterday with results unavailable. Rounding out our report is girls swim and dive. The state meet will be May 16th through 18th at the Shawnee Mission Aquatic Center. Seniors Sophia Paduano and Claire Harold seem to break more records. Wait, that's it! Studio to seniors, check the pool. Already on the studio, let's go Bravo. Claire Geralt has built a name for herself at Northwest as a two-year state dive champion representing what resilience and leadership looks like on the diving board. Um, so I started diving when I was in fourth grade, like in the summer, because my mom wanted me to like something to do and I did gymnastics. So they thought I'd be able to like pick up on it pretty easily. And I was pretty good at it. So I quit gymnastics in eighth grade to focus on diving. Geralt's dive coach, Bridget Allen, has been one of her biggest supporters throughout her dive journey. Claire came um, to Northwest as a freshman. Um, she's been on the diving team since she was a freshman. She um, already came in with a lot of skill. She had dove in the summers and had previously been on some club teams. So she had a really good foundation of diving, but she has done phenomenal. She has a really good work ethic um, and she is really all about Claire and doing the best that she can for Claire. It's definitely very like, it's inspired me to work harder because just seeing how far she's come and seeing how like, just awesome she is and how just humble she is too about how good she is. It's just really inspiring and I love like getting to watch her and it just inspired me to be the best I can. 
Like many athletes, Geralt has faced roadblocks and obstacles. Her ability to bounce back and push through is what makes her truly shine. She broke her hand. She kept on telling us it's just a bruise, like it's fine, and it was maybe the size of like my leg. Like many athletes, any kind of setback you have, um, you know, it can really get into your head um, and it can really just, you know, deter you from training the way that you want to. However, Claire, is, she just perseveres through everything. Um, she was able to get a brace so that she was able to dive or she got it taped or wrapped. Or she was on top of it from the beginning, just doing whatever she could to make sure she could get back in the pool. Instead of like going home from Rip Fest and just waiting till her injury, she just p pushed and pushed and kept on going. Despite these injuries and setbacks, Geralt continues to fight through and intends to continue her swim career at the next level. Well, after high school, I'm going to be diving at Drew University. And I'm really excited. It was a big goal of mine to dive in college since my freshman year. So I'm just excited to actually be able to do that. I just want her to enjoy her time in college. I want her to enjoy the time that she's diving. I hope that she has the best time ever. I see myself improving a lot more in college because when I get to college, I'm going to be able to do three meter. So I have a lot of goals of just like getting certain dives on there and I definitely want to potentially win an NCAA championship. I think that'd be really cool. Show up and show out at State May 16th through 18th as Geralt will be representing Blue Valley Northwest Dive. This is Julia Haney for Husky Headlines. Huh, nothing at the pool. Wait, maybe newspaper got a transmission too. Let's go see what they got. You know, two editors have been on staff for years. They leave their agencies every day. Going through the ups and downs of high school can be hard, but despite their participation in clubs, classes, and leadership roles, these two seniors have remained friends through it all. So me and Lexi are both together in DECA and FBLA, where we're usually partners. Um, we work together in newspaper as she's the editor-in-chief and I'm online editor. And we also work together in FBLA as I'm the president and she is the VP of community service. She's been with almost everything that I've done. We've traveled together for... DECA and FBLA and we started a newspaper together but it's kind of really cool because we both found our own house and things that we like and things that we dislike and so we've kind of formed our own identities by still starting things together. Getting to know them as freshmen, they were instantly DECA partners um, and they have remained on the same event all four years and the same with FBLA. So I knew they were friends coming in and then they maintained that friendship through the events that they competed in. Both girls in the introductory journalism class impressed me a great deal. I mean, they were both uh, very bright, they asked good questions, they wrote well. So getting them on newspaper was something I was very eager to do. I don't know that they've ever not done everything together. Their hard work and unique friendship has not gone unnoticed at Blue Valley Northwest. Um, told me she wanted to be in charge of the website for BDW News. I was really excited about it. She's uh, really motivated, very intelligent, driven young lady, and so very excited about that. So she got us our first fourth place nationally last month. Lexi has a really great way of making everybody feel a part of something, like they belong here. And I think the people that are on staff this year feel like they're part of something that's bigger than themselves. And so that, that should carry on for years. It's fun to see two very different girls be so close. They complement each other really well. And it's fun to see best friends who can get along and participate in activities together and really celebrate each other. Despite their differences, their friendship has proven to be beneficial in high school. Having a friend like Lexi has been really huge for me at Northwest because I think going into high school can be kind of scary doing things that you've never done before. But Lexi's always been by my side and it's been really nice to have a friend who's just so dependable and reliable and who I know will always be there to support me and get me through things with a smile on my face. It definitely gives me a lot of confidence and comfort knowing that she's always going to be around to support me or do stuff with her. Especially fun to do stuff in school whether we're working really hard in newspaper or for Decker FBLA. It's also nice to be able to hang out with her outside of school. We always make time to go and do something fun together. I came in as a freshman and I didn't really know what Northwest was going to bring to me, whether I would find like a specific club or extracurricular. I guess I just never thought that I'd be able to come in and find something that I liked that much and do it with someone that I like so much and eventually decide that that's something I want to do. It's really amazing how these two girls with different personalities complement each other so well. They bring out the best in each other and create a harmonious friendship. This is Ellie Botipka with Husky Headlines. It's weird that newspaper didn't get anything. Maybe they only told us. Let's go outside to see if there's any more leads. An agent I talk to spends a lot of time in the air. 
If it's hidden out somewhere on the soccer fields, she definitely saw it. Welcome back to another edition of H2 Verses, where we put our own headline staff members up against some of our most talented students and teachers. In this month's edition, we featured senior goalie Nemo Karani. Karani has won multiple awards, including Goalie of the Year, All-State, and has even been called up to an ID camp for the Women's Youth National Soccer Team. I've been playing with the varsity team since freshman year, since so like 2020. Yeah, I've been playing club too since I was four. I started playing goalkeeper when I was around 14 though. I just think it's a really fun game that connects people from all around the world. It doesn't matter the background, it's just, just a fun way to, you know, let loose, get together, have fun. Junior headline staff member Eli Dunley was chosen to go up against Karani in a one-on-one. -on -one. You look at me and you think, well, this guy's a hunk and this guy's a, this guy's a real athlete. And, you know, I think that my performance against Nemo really shows that. You know, my brother played here in Northwest soccer for a few years, and so I think it's in my blood. I think my incredible performance goes to show that uh, definitely runs in the family. You know, I felt pretty good. You know, I haven't touched a soccer since uh, about grade school. I used to play goalie back in, like, during just recess, but I think anyone with, like, a competent leg, they'd score on me. I mean, I think Nemo's incredibly skilled. I think she has a bright future ahead of her. I mean, I wish her nothing but the best. She absolutely smoked me. I hope I never have to prove myself on a soccer field ever again, or else I don't think it's going to end up well for me. I mean, he's, he struggled at, at first, you know. He's never really touched a soccer ball before or not really, like, competitively, so I didn't really expect him to be insanely good, but I think he was really open to learning. Soccer is a really hard sport to pick up, but maybe just, like, not being afraid to dive, which is kind of hard, too. She taught me a ton of stuff. She taught me, like, how to dive, some of the drills. I think that there's a lot more that goes into being a goalie than some people would think. A lot of people think you're just supposed to block the ball from getting into a goal. I think it's a lot more than that. One huge thing that she taught me is that um, goalies always have three hands. You have your right, your left, and you have the ground. So when you dive, you always want to kind of stick the ball into the ground so that it doesn't move. Karani is recognized by her coach for her competitiveness and leadership. She is recognized for her ability to guard the net and keep the team in games. So Nemo is the ultimate competitor. She demands excellence out of her teammates, but she puts her money where her mouth is in front of the net. She keeps us in games. She makes unbelievable saves. And when she's putting in that kind of work, she can ask anything out of her teammates. And her teammates would agree that she is very demanding on them, but she's also the first to celebrate when they do something great. Nothing comes easy. I mean, I feel like soccer is a really big sport not just America, but worldwide. So like, if you're not intentionally doing your best every day, there's definitely someone who will. Nemo is definitely leaving a legacy. She is leaving a legacy of greatness on the net that keeps us in games. Like I said, sometimes it wins us games, but she more is passing on the legacy of what true leadership looks like. Servant leadership, doing what needs to be done, saying what needs to be said, and encouraging her teammates no matter what. I'd recommend soccer to anyone who's interested in participating in a sport like that, anyone who's ever been interested in soccer. If you're going to do something like that, I feel like you need to do it as soon as possible or else you don't know when you're going to get a second chance. Karani is committed to St. Louis University where she will continue her soccer journey at a collegiate level. This is Nick Bogle for Husky Headlines. It's got to be someplace down this hallway, maybe one of the music rooms. I agree. There we have two agents that met through orchestra and they said to meet them here. When one thinks about orchestra at Northwest, they will usually think about a talented group of students that work hard to create beautiful music. What often gets overlooked are the connections students make being a part of a group. Two seniors in the orchestra have become friends and gotten close in various ways. Yeah, it's kind of funny. We actually met through um, playing Fortnite because I was really big back in the day. And, uh, and then we became closer friends through that and, and we both happened to be in orchestra. Uh, and he is one of my best friends, like really. We've been friends uh, from middle school. Ever since then, we realized that like, we really click. Cross and Thotapelli have worked hard through their years in orchestra, earning seats in the EC, KMEA District Orchestra, and All State Orchestra, as well as earning high ratings in orchestra state and regional. Through them, orchestra director Mike Arbucci has been able to see why music can create and strengthen friendships. I think music helps bring people closer together because you spend a lot of time together. So Alex and Guna have not only been in the same class since they were, gosh, uh, in middle school, really, um, but they've played in small ensembles together. They've played um, in front of judges together. They've played at universities together for our, um, like our special concerts. So all of those things kind of uh, help build friendship bonds, I think. Orchestra gives students the opportunity to work together and show off their skills. 
I think orchestra is a lot, but I think it's one, a form of connecting with other people. We are all relatively close to each other, especially in our own sections. And I have a lot of friends through orchestra, but also it's about making great music. Everyone here has like a passion for creating something that I think is, that sounds good and it feels good to play. My favorite part about being in orchestra is making something that's, I can't do on my own and being able to be a part of creating that. Guna and Alex are two of my um, favorite students that I've ever had the pleasure of teaching for so many years. Uh, I'm sad to see them leave Blue Valley Northwest, but also I'm excited for what lies next for them in the college world. It is amazing how music has the ability to bring students together and create lasting friendships. This is Anaya Zaman and Julia Haney for Husky Headlines. I don't know about that intel they gave us. Hey, we might as well check it out anyway. Well, the spirit stick is definitely not here. So what do we do now? Well, it's okay. I know an agent who is very familiar with these. Many people often overlook the idea of not going to college, but senior Jay Severson is doing just that to pursue a career in firefighting. At first, I wanted to um, join the military, um, and Sarah Barron came in and talked to my ELA class at sophomore year, and she told us about um, all these different career-ready programs. I told her that I wanted to join the military, and she recommended that I join the uh, fire science program, and after that, I fell in love with it and that's what I want to do. I'm really excited for Jay as he looks to be a part of Fire and EMS um, because of his ability to apply a lot of the principles that we've been training. Jay is an excellent problem solver. Um, he is really learning to master all the different aspects of what we've been teaching. Severson is acquiring numerous skills but what he cherishes above all during his fire science education is ensuring that he can provide the best help to people. I just want to make sure that I just perform to the best ability I can and because people people's lives are on the line. I just want to make sure that my my training is good enough and that I pull my weight, I guess. He has a heart to serve and that he was always interested in some kind of career that would give back to the community to help other people. Severson has shown significant growth while attending fire science classes at JCC. I think qualities that Jay already has, I think he's very professional. He's demonstrated a, a significant level of maturity that we would expect of someone that we would hire for the department in understanding aspects of, of our profession versus when he walked in, it was more of Jay the high schooler. And now I'm looking at Jay, almost the firefighter. It's the job I want to do. I think it's what I'm best at. Yeah, I mean, every day I go to class, I'm excited to go learn new things I haven't learned yet. Mentors and family members have observed that he appears happier and more enthusiastic about pursuing a career as a firefighter. I just think that the smile on his face is really uh, a testament to the experiences that he's had. Congratulations on finishing your certifications and advancing in your new passion for firefighting in the National Guard. We wish you the best as you progress in your firefighting career. This is Ella Dirks and Gordon Alcock for Husky Headlines. This is our last chance to find a stick for graduation. Well, maybe some other agents have info to help us out. Thanks, Ella and Nick. In honor of the 2024 seniors graduating next week, we asked them some advice they had for underclassmen. Freshman year matters. I would just say to try to have fun and just, you know, enjoy every moment of high school because it goes by really fast. I would say to be nice to everyone and make good connections with people. Do something that makes you happy and don't totally focus on school. Actually show up to class on time and make sure you stay on top of your work. Don't throw away the early years because, you know, it only gets harder the longer you go. So, you know, if you set yourself up for success in the beginning, you'll do better in the long run. Cherish every moment and get involved with everything so you can have more friends. I would say have fun and make memories with your friends while you can because it goes by quick. Stay focused, work hard. Um, don't let anything, you know what I'm saying, get up under your nose. Just keep working hard and, you know, 
do your best. Learn to accept new opportunities. My advice is to start getting good grades your freshman year to keep your GPA up. Honestly, just to get involved as you can. Uh, I would say get your homework done on time and make sure you're staying up with your grades so it helps better whenever you're doing your college applications. Uh, have fun, get involved with everything you can. Um, I would say make sure you're uh, having a good time, uh, making a lot of friends, and um, get to class on time doing your work. All right, that's all we have for senior advice. Back to you, Ella and Nick. Well, at least we don't have that car high the whole time. Yeah, hopefully school spirit's better next year, but I've had fun looking for the spirit stick anyway.